gang, Will Snyder here. I've been uh, asked to put together a, a how-to video on uh, taking a um, GP9 here. Uh, it's an MTH with split pilot and making it into a fixed pilot uh, for KD coupler conversion. So I'll try to see if I can, can walk everybody through this. Uh, the first thing you'll need to do is uh, get some 0.125 thick styrene, and you'll need two pieces, uh, three-quarter inch in width, and the length would be the length that you would need to go from um, end of front to end of front. So once you... Once you cut those rectangular pieces out, you would lay the piece of styrene in here like I have it now, mark it, and then you would take a Dremel motor tool and cut out, cut out your markings. I have found with uh, the MTH that uh, the coupler height comes out just about perfect with the .125 styrene. So that's the first part of it. Uh, again, it's uh, taking two pieces like this, three quarters inch um, wide, 0.125 thick, and the length overall is, uh, bear with me here a second, about two and a half inches. So let me get this other one cut and then we'll continue on with this. I did want to mention that uh, one of the first things you have to do is separate the body uh, from the chassis and take out the coupler assemblies. Um, they're a little bit tricky, but if you take your time, uh, you should be able to get them out okay. So I did mine in a way that uh, I could save the whole assembly. As you can see here, on the end, uh, you have that little connector. If you can get that connector off, there's two little slits that you can push down on and get those uh, two little prongs free of that connector. It will make the job of taking the whole coupler out a lot, lot easier. So, and I did this so I could save these couplers in case somebody else needed them. All right, stand by for a little more. Okay, now, this is probably one of the trickier parts, if I can get my camera in here. So, I have my rectangular piece placed in. I'm getting ready to mark where it's cut out for the steps. So, you definitely want to get it square, and you want to get it very flush on the very front end with the, with the top of the walkway. And then, you want to make sure that you're flush at this side over to this side make sure you have the thing set perfectly flush before you go to market what I'll be doing now is uh, just taking my pencil and marking a, a u-shape on the styrene to cut with a Dremel tool Okay, so now as you can see, I have my pencil marks where I'm going to be making my cuts with the Dremel tool. Um, I found that I can, I can make a cut here and here, and then I'll have to take a um, chisel blade and score a line across here. And then I can snap that off for a good clean cut. So now, as you can see, I've got my spacer pieces cut. I've done a, a, a trial fitting. I have just a little bit of filing to do to kind of square up the opening for the steps. But, you know, that's just something you have to play by ear. Um, luckily, I have very little filing to do, but... Basically, there is your spacer piece.
Okay, so as you can see, once you have everything filed and uh, sanded to the shape and squared up, uh, this is what you would have that fits between the body and the uh, pilot. So this is your spacer, and this is the first part of the conversion. Because I'm doing them both at the same time, you can see I marked them short hood and long hood, so I don't get them mixed up. I've got them filed right now to uh, fit the way I want them to fit, so I marked them so I wouldn't get them reversed putting them on. Okay, so now the, the next step in this will be to take your, your Dremel motor tool and you're going to have to cut this tab off right here um, so that your spacer slides in there. So you have a tab at this end and you have a, a tab at this end that's going to have to be cut off with the Dremel motor tool and once that's done then you're going to come in and you're going to cut off your pilots and you want to cut them back enough that when the wheels turn they won't be hitting anything it's trial and error uh, the other one I did the one truck I had to actually cut twice uh, to get the clearance I needed but you know if you don't have the clearance don't panic just trim a little more okay just to show you before I made my cut or make my cut uh, I put some wide tape masking tape in around the truck assembly and the motor assembly and basically to keep the metal shavings out away from gears and motor parts so uh, in the past I actually had a little piece of shaving get into a gear and couldn't figure why the locomotive would only move two inches and stop so took a little while to figure it out but there it was just a little metal shaving from when I was cutting so anyway good practice uh, tape off open areas there so shavings won't go in so okay now you can see the one piece of the metal frame that I have cut off okay so I got both ends cut off and basically you'll see what it does it kind of squares the squares the frame up and now you can see how much of the uh, pilot you need to cut off so the truck doesn't interfere with the swing and that will be the next step now to cut these pilots free okay now that I got the pilot uh, cut off I'm gonna go ahead and do some trimming right here I'm gonna cut at an angle I'm going to cut this knob off a little bit and I'm going to cut right here uh, at an angle just so that as the truck swings I get that clearance I need so it's not hitting the new fixed pilot. Alrighty, well we've got the uh, frame all squared away, everything cut that needs to be cut, all the excess is cut off. Uh, a little excess metal trimmed off the trucks. So now our next step is going to be dealing with the pilots itself. And as you can see, you've got that that great big opening in the center uh, for the claw coupler. That's going to have to be addressed next. So you'll take a uh, piece of point uh, 60, 060 styrene, and you're going to want to... Uh, cut it three quarters of an inch wide by about seven eighths of an inch long and what you'll be doing is taking that that piece fitting it tight against the one edge and then marking the other edge uh, I've already marked this piece so you can see the the excess I have to cut off and you'll do that for both both pilots okay so when you're finished you should have a piece that looks just like that fits and you'll probably notice that this opening is not perfectly square 
Uh, when you draw your line, it's uh, a little at a little bit of an angle. But uh, I always like to just cut a little shy of the line and then file down or sand down what I need. As you can see, that piece right now is just fitting in there on its own. Uh, no glue or anything, so it's a good tight fit. And that's what you're looking for. So now the next thing we're going to have to address is in this piece, uh, we need to address right where right where the coupler pocket's going to go. Oh, excuse me. All right, so the first thing that you're going to be needing is some uh, plaster structs. Uh, you can see the the shape of it there. It's uh, number 90895.100. In thickness it's a quarter round and basically what that quarter round is going to make will be the very very top of the of the uh, coupler assembly of the pocket so that being said we we first have to find center of that uh, opening that we just filled in. Well hopefully you can see this but what I've done is taken that piece of cord around and have uh, put it at the very top and then took a coupler um, pocket assembly and um, made the outline of where the the coupler will actually be sitting and what I'll do now is because that quarter round is a little longer than the coupler pocket, I'll uh, cut straight up on both sides and then chisel out this bottom line. And, you know, at this point, uh, allow yourself a little bit. You know, it's, it's better to have to sand and file down to get the coupler opening to where you want it than to have it too big and too sloppy. So this would be the, the next step. Let me get that done. I'll show you what it looks like finished. Okay, so you can see here what I've done. I, I've cut that out uh, for the coupler pocket and uh, keeping in mind that there's a piece of quarter round goes across the top. And so what we'll do now is we'll glue that piece of quarter round on and then we'll uh, keep sanding and test fitting till we can get the coupler pocket in that opening. I do want to mention that at this point you can glue that white piece of styrene in. Okay, so while all that's drying, we'll take a coupler pocket and those, um, if you can see it here, the two little uh, the two little lugs on the sides, we're going to grind them off. Uh, so that we can slide that that pocket in that opening. Those two side lugs are, are not going to be needed at all. Okay, so as you can see, I've got those two side lugs ground off. I always like using the metal uh, pockets as opposed to the plastic. They're just, to me, that much more durable. So now we'll do a test fit. Alrighty, well I did the test fit. I just had to file just a little bit off of the bottom of it, but you can see what we got there. It's starting to come together. Now what you need to do with the uh, the pocket in there, you need to take a piece of uh, .060 styrene and make yourself a little pad to slide under the coupler pocket and glue that in place. Uh, that way you have something to uh, drill, a number 50 drill, and tap, tap that pocket uh, good and tight to the, to the front pilot. So that would be the next step. Okay, as you can see, I glued the pad in there, and uh, it's ready for the, the pocket to go back in. Okay, so now what we're going to do before we finish the coupler assembly 
we've got that top quarter round piece. We're going to take a uh, piece of square styrene, square stock, uh, 0 0.080, and we're going to put a piece on this side of the pocket and a piece on this side of the pocket, cut them the length to the pocket, and then we'll put a piece on the bottom forming uh, the whole assembly, the whole co the coupler pocket assembly. So let me uh, get these pieces cut and glued, and I'll show you. All righty, well, here we go. Here is the completed front pilot. All we have to do is put the KD coupler in the box and slide the box back in and screw it down tight, and then we'll mount the pilot and the spacer to the body and that's it it's ready for you know a little cleanup and and painting alrighty so I've uh, mounted the body back on the frame the chassis and uh, from the last GP9 that I did one of the things I learned that came as a surprise there's a lip right here that doesn't allow for the pilot to sit flat so I have I took some um, 0 .030 by 0 .080 strip styrene and basically just put a piece right around the the steps and up to where that frame ends and that was just just enough to make the whole the whole pilot set level so that's what we'll be doing next Alrighty, so now you can kind of see where I've added that those strips of styrene. That'll help the whole pilot assembly to set square level and give it a little something to glue to. Alrighty, so I've got the uh, spacer uh, glued to the body. And I just went ahead and assembled the KD coupler. Um... It is now ready to go. I did leave a little space between that three-quarter piece at the top and the um, front edge of the coupler so I could get a little more a little more play out of the coupler for tighter curves. So, And it, to me, it just looks a little better sticking out like that. Looks more like draft gear. So now the final step is to, be, to glue this whole assembly to the body and check coupler height and that's basically it all right guys well here we go the finished product other than painting uh, this is what it should look like i have checked the coupler height and um it's a hair high so what i'll do is take the coupler back off and use one of these little KD fiber spacers uh, just to drop that coupler down that one thickness and I, that'll make it absolutely perfect so no big deal I just have to trim that that fiber spacer a little bit but anyway uh, there you have it that's one end of it and uh, when I finish the other end and get it painted and weathered how I'll, I'll be posting um, the finished product so I do hope that this how-to uh, has been a big help and this is what you should be looking at before painting and I'll do a little a little cleanup a little filing and clean things up and fill gaps and the nice thing is though on Brunswick green or black very forgiving uh, little imperfections will not show but anyway, I hope this will be a help to you. Uh, hardest thing about KD conversion on um, O-gauge are the diesels uh, with the pilots not being fixed. Uh, steam locomotives are pretty straightforward. Most of the freight cars aren't bad, but uh, there is a little more of a challenge. And like I said, now this is an MTH GP9, and uh, this was my remedy to it. And I will, uh, again, show you the finished product uh, once I paint it and weathered, but that'll be in a day or two. All right, I hope this has been some help to y'all. Keep on tracking.